Hey, Econ students, this is Jacob Clifford. A few days ago, I posted a video that explained the structure of the AP exam and gave you some helpful tips. In this video, I'm gonna dive deeper into the free responses and give you some strategies that'll help maximize your score. As you know, there's three free responses and the first one is longer and worth more points and it's gonna pull from concepts from almost every single unit. The second and third free responses are shorter and usually pull content from only one or maybe two units. Now, the tip I give my students when it comes to free responses is I tell them to roll. Actually, I'd force them to write R-O-L-L -L on their free response before they started. R stands for read the entire question first. This is gonna help you see the big picture and sometimes understanding what they're asking in part B helps you understand what they're trying to say in part A. O stands for organize your answer. Before you start writing, know how many graphs you need to draw and where you have to explain. Remember, there's a huge difference between identify and explain. Identify, you just have the right answer. For explain, to get the point, you gotta explain it out. And in recent years, they're putting more emphasis on showing your work. So when you do a calculation, you have to show your work or you don't get the point. The first L stands for list your answers. These are not essays. Don't write long answers for everything. Break it down like the free response. So list out your answers. A, I, put your answer. A, double I, put your answer. B, I, there's your answer. The last L stands for label. There's a lot of graphing, so draw big graphs and make sure to label them correctly. The worst thing is to miss a point by not putting the letter S. What? And a lot of times the College Board tells you what to label the graph, so PL1 or Y1, use their labeling. The point is, if you want to do well in your free response, make sure to roll. Read the entire question, organize your answers, list out your answers, and be sure to label. Okay, now you know what to do, but your next question is, what are they gonna actually ask me? After doing this for 20 years, I can confidently tell you that this year, I don't know, but I do see patterns. For example, here's the AP Macroeconomics Fear Response number one, Topic tree. So many fear responses over the years have followed this pattern, so let me explain. The fear response starts by telling you where the economy is, either a negative output gap, full employment, or a positive output gap. From there, they ask you to draw that economy using either aggregate demand and supply or the Phillips curve. The majority of the time, it's aggregate demand and supply, but make sure you know both. From there, they usually ask you to do one of four things. The first is they can ask you about fiscal policy and how that could close any gaps. The second is they can ask you about monetary policy and how that can be used to close the gaps. Third, they can say there's no policy and ask you questions about a long run self-adjustment. And fourth, they can ask you a question about some random shift. Something happened and this needs to be shown on that graph. So they ask you one of these four things and have you explain it and usually draw it on the graph you drew in the beginning. And they'll bounce around. They might ask you about monetary policy and a long run self adjustment. Now, if they ask you about fiscal policy, they usually branch out into one of two things either the spending multiplier telling you the marginal propensity to consume and how much money needs to be spent to close a gap, or how deficit spending can affect the loanable funds market and make you draw that graph. And most of the time, when they have you draw the loanable funds market, they connect that to higher interest rates and crowding out and how that affects economic growth. Now, if they ask you about monetary policy, be sure you can explain the shifters of money supply, especially over open market operations. Now from there, they can ask you questions about the money multiplier, but they usually don't. They focus on the money market graph. From there, if there's any more questions, they're gonna ask you about foreign exchange and how one of these changes affects exchange rates. So this is it. It's the AP Macroeconomics Fear Response number one, topic tree. Now to prove I'm not just making this up, here's some fear responses they've given in the past and how they look on the tree. It doesn't give you the answers, but it does simplify things so you know what to expect. Now remember, this is only for the first free response. The other two free responses are a free-for-all. Again, they only cover topics from one or two units. So it could be about comparative advantage or bank balance sheets, or it could have you do some calculations like the GDP deflator and the unemployment rate. But one thing's for sure, when you do the three free responses, you're gonna draw at least four of the six key graphs. So if you're not asked to draw the money market graph in free response number one, you'll likely see it in free response two or three. Oh, okay. Now, a few days before the AP exam, I'm gonna post a video with my official predictions for this year's free responses. And this year, I'm gonna do something I've never done before. I'm gonna invite teachers to make their predictions and post them on my website. That way you can see what other people think are gonna be on the free response, and we're gonna have a little bit of competition. So if you're a teacher, make sure that you're on my mailing list and watch out for an email that's gonna give you an invitation to make your predictions. And three days after the AP exam, I'll make a video going over the answers and give a shout out to the teacher who had the best prediction. Okay, stay tuned for more 
more videos are going to help you get ready for the AP exam. And if this video helped you, be sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Till next time.